Today on Wick and Wonder Kids, we try and win a football match. Hello and welcome back to Wick and Wonder Kids. This is episode three. Coming up in today's episode, we pick the perfect team. We pick the perfect team. Team selection, the art of team selection, and it is an art. Trust me. We aim to win the two games that we play on screen today by selecting the correct team. It's absolute ingenious stuff, guys. We've had some decent results, some bad results, some good results. So Kevin Summerfield has managed the team for the entirety. We've been on our Holly Bobs. He's had a one-all draw with Bournemouth. That was our last result, which is a really great result. Fair play to him. He's been playing the tactics that we set up with the team selection that we ask him to select as long as everybody's fit. And in this game here, Bournemouth played a 4-4-2, but we managed to beat them in a close game with Gape scoring the only goal. Dominic Gape smash him on in there. Don't laugh. Previous to that then, a brilliant 1-0 victory at Coventry where player coach himself, Bloomfield, comes on in the 70th minute to score the winner. He's 36 years old old and he's very determined and he's got a great level of discipline he's going to be a great coach for us he wants to be assistant manager but he hasn't got the judging player ability unfortunately or the judging player potential but if an assistant manager role comes up for you mr bloomfield i'm not going to hold you back 4-3 win at stoke was excellent again really tight game lots of shots for us there 21 shots our front players turned up in this game david the patron 7.7 .7. Samuel 7.2, two goals from Dave and a goal from Clark and Knight there as well. So the fullback and the defensive midfielder both getting a goal there. A few losses, a few draws. We're in 10th in the championship, which is quite good. 10th is quite a good position, I think. 30 points and we're only four points off the playoffs. Now, team selection for our game against QPR. I'll bring up the schedule here. We've got QPR at home and then Bristol City away. And I'm going to show you how I select the teams when I'm managing the game. And we will try and win both games purely by selecting the right team. Here we go. Now what I like to do on my team selection screen is add a column called training rating. So insert column, go to training, and then go to training rating. And there it is, training rating. So you can sort players by how good they're performing in training really. And straight away you can see Alex Samuel here is doing a 9.10 in training. So he gets a starting position. Alex Patterson, again, 9.10 as well, gets a start in place. Jason McCarthy here, who's on the bench, has been 8.9. So McCarthy is going to come in for either Josh Clark or McGlure, depending on how they have been training, basically. So McGlure has been training good, 8.45. So it leaves us, the only place we can put him is right back. So Josh Clark's down at 7, and he won't be too mad going on the bench because he's a young kid anyway one two three four five six that that's our six best trainers on the pitch in the first 11 and you know what we're going to give the goal should we give the goalkeeper a start the young guy we'll give the young goalkeeper a start as well because this guy his potential is very very good he's got good concentration here but if you look at his stars look at that potential ability really good and he's 20 and this guy the other goalkeeper is leaving in january so maybe we'll start playing this goalkeeper his training rating is excellent. Next then, what I like to look at is form. I know, it's revolutionary, isn't it? So we head on over to last five games and we sort by last five games. Now you see the top, our top six players for last three games. And let me just, let me just scooch all this down a little bit. Okay, so I've scooched all that down so we can see it all on the same screen. Last five games, you can see our top like seven players aren't in the starting lineup. Gape is at a 6.98, but one, two, three, four, five, six. The top six aren't in the team. 
He's injured and he's injured, so that's an easy win for us. Ryan Allsop, he's a goalkeeper as far as I know, yeah. He's the one who's going, okay, so we'll leave him out. Anis Mehet, I don't even know who this guy is. Oh, he's a young kid. He's the Albanian winger, okay. A bit of promise, but not really good enough to step into the first team. So these guys, unfortunately, they're all going to get a place on the bench. I'm going to put Stockdale on the bench as well as, as number one on the bench. And that'll be the team, okay. So we've... Look at these trainers. They've all been training excellent. Kevin Summerfield, our wonderful assistant, de facto assistant manager, has taken all the team talks and all the interviews with the press, etc. He's doing basically a lot of my job for me. I'm on holiday for a lot of the time. Here's the team then. So we've got Samuel up front, David and Hogan as the two wingers. Hogan is our best player, if you want me to refresh you. The left-footed inside forward playing on the right-hand side of Irish descent. Dominic Gape, centre midfield, alongside the workhorse that is Alex Patterson. The young boy on loan from, I think it's Blackburn, Josh Knight on loan from Leicester, sorry, I keep getting that wrong, is developing quite nicely. He's a centre-back, but we're playing him in defensive centre midfield. Jacobson, our set-piece master, is left-back. Wow, he's great at corners, look at that. McCarthy gets the nod because of his training at right-back. Our loan signing that we want to make permanent, the beast, the speed demon, McGlure is at centre back with our one of our best players, Stuart Anthony Stewart. Now we haven't got a lot of height in the team, and we haven't got a lot of uh, dominance in the air basically, so uh, that could be an issue. But yeah, let's see how the team perform. If they can perform well in training, why can't they do it on the pitch? Let's see. Let's see what they're all about. That's the team sheet then, and here we go, kick off. Okay, so McGlure puts it straight up to the top of the pitch there, playing very direct, and it's worked out okay. We got a shot off there, David got a shot off, so that's not too bad. Nine minutes gone, so we're analyzing these tactics. Trying to analyze them anyway as we go. I've put the highlights on extended, so we can see a little bit more of what's going on. Again, direct counter-attack there. David threw on goal again, but straight at the keeper. Getting a lot of good chances, happy with that. Hogan picks up just outside the box. David with another chance again. Dave, you're smashing it. But you're only smashing it straight at the keeper. Come on, Dave. Jacobson. Oh, 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 oh the set piece master misses. We're absolutely destroying them in this game. Got my dogs here wandering around. If you can hear that noise in the background. Can't, it's just out of shot. You can't see them. You see him there? No. Samuel, Patterson. Great football here. Hogan into the box. Can't get the pass away. Just missing that final ball or that final clinical bit of finishing in the final third. But a good performance from the lads so far. But it's still nil-nil. Uh-oh, this looks dangerous. Oh, a set piece from QPR. But they do not capitalise on it. Oh, QPR get another highlight. This normally spells bad news. Oh, dear. And it's a goal for Queen's Park Rangers against the run of play. Beats my young goalkeeper at the near post. That's unfortunate. No replay there. I thought I had my replays on. Let me just change that. Okay, half time has gone. Replays are now on. Losing 1 0 to QPR, but we've had the better of the game. I don't think they can deny that. I don't think anybody could have done it can deny that us Jacobson to Patterson into Samuel David Jacobson oh lovely football of interchange and very quick Hogan oh and he can't finish but it's a great save from the goalkeeper and it's a corner Jacobson delivers it tries to get to the far post but it's cleared by Dickey oh and Queen's Park Rangers can break but Knight with a great challenge even though he's on a yellow card there might have to make a quick substitution and take Knight off because of that yellow card and because of the position that he plays we do not want that yellow card to go any worse because yellow cards turn into red cards i mean i didn't know that for a long time but that's what happens two yellows equals a red ladies and gentlemen okay so curtis thompson gets the nod confirm sub and on we go 62 minutes gone we're still losing one nil we should be winning this game XG of 1 to 0 0.25.
Just some poor finishing from David and from Hogan, really. That's it. Akin Fenwa's coming on. Show us that pace, Akin Fenwa. Oh, no. Oh, that spelt danger. Free kick from QPR in the dying minutes of the game. 83 minutes gone. McGlaw wins the ball. Hogan to Thompson. Puts it out to Jacobson, who brings it to David, who cuts it back to Hogan. What is Hogan doing? Was that a poor first touch, or was he trying to pull it back to someone? That was insane. Okay. <sighs> Have Wickham got anything left in the tank? The pressing is still good, but Queen's Park Rangers are toying with us now. Oh, Wickham are tiring. Oh, and QPR get the second goal. Tom Carroll with a shot from outside the box. And that seals it against the run of play yet again. That puts Wickham down the table. And our team selection theory goes out the window. It's 89 minutes gone. We're going to go very attacking. We're going to make one more substitution. But I fear that it's just going to play into the opposition's hands. Because it's going to be wasting a little bit of time. I'm not even going to make the substitution. There's no one on the bench. We haven't got the squad. There's no one I want to play from the bench. Akin Fenwa's already on. That's it. That's all I've got. Good save there from Anderson. I hope his confidence isn't shot after this game. One last chance for Wickham. Ball goes into the box. But nothing's doing. The referee blows the full-time whistle. And it's 2 nil that Wickham lose had the better of the game that is a game we should have won no doubt about it that was a poor performance on each and every one of the players even though we tried to pick the team via the training what we saw on the training pitch it hasn't translated onto the actual pitch the guys have let us down the stats were there they haven't performed let's hope Kevin Summerfield gives him a bollock in that puts us down to 12th in the table. Still only five points off the playoff spot, but not a good performance from the guys. The opportunity was there to take that game and we didn't take it, unfortunately. We live and learn. Okay, so we've got Bristol City on Boxing Day here in Wickham Wonder Kids. We've had a look at the training rating again and Curtis Anderson, our goalkeeper, is top still with 9.1. But... We might have to drop him. Oh, we can't drop him without training rating, surely. Okay, so he's coming back in. So Curtis Anderson is starting. We've just got to pick Josh Knight's replacement in that centre midfield role. Grimmer is someone we like, but he can't play that position. So it's going to have to go to the boy who's on loan from Everton. And this one is on loan from Everton. It is Dennis Adeniran. So Dennis Adeniran comes in and plays the Josh Knight role. Okay, so Wickham Wonder Kids kick off, hoping for a better performance this time. The stats told a different story at QPR. We should have won that game, but the boys just didn't perform for us. So hopefully this time, David, hopefully David can finish. Oh, Dave. Gets tackled in the box. Four minutes gone, and Wickham showing like they're the better team already. Would love to get in the playoffs this year. Oh, God, another set piece. Oh, God, it's just gone straight through. Oh, maybe we should um, put that into our training, defending set pieces. It's usually a good thing to do on Football Manager. Make sure you're defending set pieces in your training. 24 minutes gone now. Another set piece for the opposition. Oh, and it's a goal. I hang my head in shame. Here's the replay. It's just put into the back post and no one's there. Where's the marking? Very, very bad. Okay, let's see what the boys can do in an attacking sense now. Let's see some of that good free-flowing football. Oh, and what a goal from our front man, Alex Samuel. Great little ball in there. I think it was from Hogan. We'll see the result, the replay now. Samuel holds it up to Hogan and comes inside. Great through ball, excellent movement, and a superb finished that is what we came here to see one all McCarthy to Hogan gets to the byline but the goalkeeper picks it up 42 minutes gone heading into half time one all 
Looking at my team here in the right, Jacobson, or Jacobson, how do you pronounce that? I've been calling him Jacobson the whole time, but it's probably Jacobson. He's a bit tired. Kevin Summerfield with the team talk. He's got it motivating our Kev. I hope he is. Nice interception there from McCarthy. Gives it to Hogan and then the camera cuts out for some reason. But Gape picks it up. Oh, and it's taken off Gape. But then McGlaw picks it up, gives it to McCarthy. This is end-to-end -end stuff. No one can keep the ball. Hogan on the inside right channel. Goes for a shot. But it's wide. Nice and compact. There from Wickham Warner. Kids, they win the ball straight away. Hogan comes to the byline, gets tackled. McCarthy picks it up at right back. Puts it into the boy on loan from Everton. Gape. Hogan Samuel puts it wide. Good football there, Wickham. 50 minutes gone. Uh-oh, looks like the opposition are in here. They're in around the box. Jackson clears it. He's a bit injured, though. But I don't want to take him off. He's the set-piece specialist. Hopefully that injury, hopefully he can shrug it off. Oh, no, what a poor back pass that was. He's thrown on goal, but he puts it wide. We're let off there. We were let off there. Distributes it out to the centre-backs. <laughs> What's the point in distributing it to the centre-backs? We're just going to kick it long. That's a bit crazy. I might have to change that. Great tackle though from the centre back. Gives it to David. He goes on a jinking run and takes a shot from outside the box. That was always going straight into the keeper's hand. 63 minutes gone. We might have to do. Jacobson! He's Jacobson! McGlaw! It's fizzled out. Patterson! David! Oh my gosh, that shot nearly went out for a throw in. 65 minutes gone. We might have to do our traditional Akin Fenwa substitution. The opposition passing the ball around near the centre circle. But they managed to make their way to outside our box. Are they going to get a shot away? Looks like they are. Oh, and it goes wide. <sighs> Wickham won the kids' manager. His heart was in his mouth when he was watching that attack from the opposition. 73 minutes gone now. 74. Wickham are winning the battle of the statistics. And they have a corner. David picks it up outside the area after the corner. Goes for a shot and that's high and wide as well. 76 minutes gone and we'll look to make a substitution. Akin Fenwa is coming on. Jacobson is injured but wants to stay on. We like that. We do like that. Samuel's having a good game. David is not having a good game. We'll put Akinfemo on for David and then we'll swap the two around. That's a cheeky one. We've done that one before. Doesn't always work. In fact, I don't think it's ever worked. But Akinfemo has come on and scored for us before. Once. I promise you. Episode 1. 82 minutes gone. McGlaw, Hogan, Gate, McCarthy at right back. Is he going to put the cross in? Oh, he gets tackled. We recycle possession at the back. McCarthy loses the ball again. Oh, good save there from the young goalkeeper, though. 84 minutes. 1-1. One, one. Wickham are going to throw the kitchen sink at it. 87 minutes gone. They're going to go very attacking. They're not happy with the draw. They want to win. They'd rather have three points than one. And if it is no points, so be it. Tackle from Hogan. Is it a card? No, it's no card, but it's a dangerous set piece. Every set piece is dangerous. But Anderson comes out, collects the ball, showing experience beyond his years. But no, that's got to be offside. Referee, he was miles off. No! Watch this now. Anderson kicks it out. Push up, push up. Oh, he was off. He was miles off, ref. Ah. What a savage way to lose. And they're going to score again, are they? No. Oh, they're in the box. McGlaw with a header. Wins a header for once. 90 minutes gone and we're losing 2-1. Oh, we're on the most attacking mentality we can. Oh, dear. That was offside, though. How can you see that one, ref? But you can't see the other one. Full time. Very disappointed with that. Never mind, we go again. Kev 
give them good team talk, pick their spirits up. That wasn't what, how we wanted to end it. Is that two losses? I think that's two losses again. Oh, we're going to have that work cut out now. The January transfer market comes next. Is there anything we can do to stop the slide? Wickham sit in 12th place in the league. Seven points off the playoffs. And Brentford lead the championship with 51 points. Join us next time on the next episode. Hopefully there'll be some movement in the transfer window. Thanks for sticking around. See you next time.